Are you tired of dying against Behemoth? Are you tired of seeing your teammates screw up and getting killed by the Ecliptic Meteor and thus failing the quest? Well boy have I got a video for you. Hello Hunters, my name is Dark Hero and welcome back to my channel where we cover Monster Hunter content. I am so glad you're here. A lot of you guys have been asking me for tips on how to defeat Behemoth. After all, I've been able to defeat him 20 times by now and I've also been helping out a bunch of people that had never been able to take down Behemoth before. So with that I bring you this video that shows a set that I have been using that has allowed me to carry several groups to victory. I will also cover some very specific tips that will severely increase your odds of succeeding. This is not going to be one of those basic guides where YouTubers that have only defeated Behemoth once or twice talk about a few of the Behemoth's attacks, they talk about some of the mechanics of the fight and they only end up talking about things that everyone knows and this is not that. In this guide I will talk about some very specific things that will definitely make you succeed. I mean, like I said, I have defeated Behemoth over 20 times by now, so I know what I'm talking about when I tell you this. But before we get into that, if you are excited and want to support the channel then please make sure to smash the hell out of the like button below for us because you all already know that your support is greatly appreciated. And with that being said, let's get started. The first thing that I would like to cover is my mixed set, because I really do believe that this has played a very very big role in making sure that our group ends up succeeding in defeating Behemoth. As you know, in the Behemoth fights you are supposed to have three different roles. You have someone that is going to be a damage dealer, you have someone that is going to be a tank, someone that guides Behemoth around, makes sure that Behemoth does not destroy the comets and is there to take the hits and then you have a supportive player, the player that keeps the team alive and that in my opinion is the MVP, the most valuable player, the most valuable hunter. Because if you are having a hard time it doesn't really matter how long it takes until you defeat Behemoth, the important thing is that you end up defeating it and if you can stay alive you can win and so I have come up with this hunting horn supportive build. Whoa, a supportive set? I hear you say. Don't worry, playing as a support is actually much easier than you think and as you will see using this set is what will allow you to overcome the challenges that you are facing. But more importantly this set uses the wiggler head. Now you don't necessarily need to use the hunting horn so that is why I will leave the details of the weapon that I use for last. So first let's talk about the armor sets and the skills that I have that make this set so powerful. So the armor pieces that I choose to use on this set are firstly the wiggler head since it comes with wide range level 2 and also gives me 2 level 1 decoration slots, the Kulf Teroth chest beta which gives you stun resistance level 2 and 1 level 3 decoration slot along with 1 level 1 decoration slot, the Lunastra Vembraces beta which gives you wide range level 2 along with 1 level 3 decoration slot and 1 level 2 decoration slot, the Valhazak coil gamma which gives you recovery speed level 2 Dragon Attack level 1, 1 level 2 decoration slot and 2 level 1 decoration slots. And the final piece of the set is the Rathian Greaves Alpha which gives you recovery up level 2 and unfortunately does not give you a decoration slot but as we saw with the previous pieces we have plenty of decoration slots to use. As for the charm I use the Glutton's Charm 3 which gives me speed eating level 3 which then allows me to consume my items much faster. I think you already know where we're headed with this, but now let's look at the skills that we get once we place some decorations. All in all, we end up with the following skills. Wide range level 5, which is the most important skill in our set that makes it so the items we use to heal ourselves or to buff ourselves also do the same for our teammates. Stun resistance is here to of course prevent any sort of stun, you definitely don't want to be caught off guard by Behemoth, he is a very powerful monster and he will destroy you if you are not careful and by having stun resistance level 3 I can guarantee that I am never going to be stuck and I am always ready to heal myself or my teammates to make sure that no one dies. 
and the same thing applies for Tremor Resistance Level 3, which nullifies minor and major ground tremors, which is also something that can stop you on your tracks and can prevent you from healing your teammates or yourself and can then lead to a death that could easily be avoidable if you only have tremor resistance equipped. Recovery speed is important because it quadruples the speed at which you heal yourself. Unfortunately, recovery speed does not apply to your teammates but it's still a very powerful skill and whenever you are in a pinch you just drink a bag of potion and you are right back up to full health in less than a millisecond. You can hardly tell the time it takes for you to heal yourself. It is a very powerful skill and uh, here you can see it in action. But as you can see that mega potion heals a bit more than you usually see a mega potion healing and that is because of recovery up which at level 2 which is the level that we have makes it so that it increases the amount of health that is restored by 20% and this of course applies to our teammates which makes you an even stronger support player. Now I would like to have recovery up level 3 unfortunately I do not have the jewel for that and if I could I would trade one of these spare slots we have for it. Speed eating level 3 is here because it makes it so that we can consume our items much much faster and then we cannot get cut off while we are drinking a mega potion because we drink it nearly instantly. Dragon attack and critical boost are just byproducts of the armors that we are using on this set and Horned Maestro is here to extend the melody effects duration and increasing the health recovery but if you are not using a hunting horn this is pretty much useless for you. I have Mushroom Mancer level 1 which makes it so that I can use blue mushrooms to serve as potions in case I run out of potions and mega potions which trust me it can happen with some groups that are not too good at keeping themselves alive so you really need to play babysitter and drink a lot of mega potions and at some points even if you go back to camp and restock you are going to run out of potions and mega potions so having those blue mushrooms serving as potions can come in quite handy. And this also lets you use toadstools as immunizers which are pretty easy to get. Unfortunately I do not have a second mushroom monster jewel otherwise I would remove the health boost skill and instead have Mushroom Mancer level 2, but I don't think Mushroom Mancer level 2 is that necessary because I still use Mega Demon Drug and Mega Armor Skin as opposed to the regular Demon Drug and the regular Armor Skin because obviously the benefits of the Mega versions are greater and the Mushroom Mancer level 2 will only grant you the benefits of the Demon Drug and the Armor Skin, not the Mega Demon Drug or the Mega Armor Skin. Hasten Recovery is what I get from the Hunting Horn that I'm using, the Lunastro and Gigante variant. And finally, probably one of the most important skills that I have here is Free Meal, which makes it so that each time that I consume an item, uh, drink a Mega Potion, drink a Mega Demon Drug or whatever else, I have a 25% chance that I will not waste that item. I will still consume it and the effects will activate to me and to the entire team thanks to wide range, but I will not waste the item, which is pretty important because playing support, especially when you are helping a lot of people go through Behemoth, can be quite costly. Since we are on the topic of items and I am playing as a supportive player, let me show you what items I usually bring when I'm hunting Behemoth. As you can see, this is my support set. Here are some potions, mega potions. Max potions and ancient potions aren't really needed because they only affect yourself. Unfortunately, wide range does not affect these. So theoretically, you could actually remove them and I would see not much of a point to bringing them. Maybe if you are in a pinch and you really need to heal yourself instantly in that precise moment and only yourself you might it might be a good idea for you to use max potion but other than that it's really not necessary null berries are here because behemoth has a thunder attack that inflicts thunder blight and this will of course heal that for your entire team rations are here just because 
you may need to recover some stamina for someone in your fire team and this will take care of that very quickly. Mega nutrients are very useful, they increase the maximum health level that you have so you can do this at the beginning of the quest and it will apply to everyone in your party. Immunizer is just to make it so that your ability to heal will go faster so instead of having a red health portion you will have a yellow health portion which means that it will heal twice as fast and if you don't want to run some immunizers because they might be a bit difficult to get they might be a bit expensive you can always use the toads tools which will do the same thing if you have mushroom Mancer level one and of course blue mushrooms will do the same as a potion and you can actually consume them even faster than a potion so they are a great tool to use like I said when you run out of mega potions and potions in the middle of a fight and should you run out of items in the middle of a fight I always bring a far caster in case you want to return to camp and grab a few items and then go back into the fight when your stock is full dash juice is here because it reduces the stamina depletion for a certain period of time and this of course affects the entire party and this may be a very important factor in making sure that someone in your team is able to run and get behind a fallen comet in time just before the ecliptic meteor falls down and wipes your entire team then of course we have the might seeds mega demon drug adamant seed and mega armor skid these are all to buff your attack and your defense the mega demon drug and the mega armor skin will be active until you faint until you cart so you can use these at the beginning of the quest and it will affect everyone in your party and you will be good to go at least until someone cards honey is obviously here so that when you run out of mega potions you can quickly go into your crafting list and then craft some mega potions with the potions and the honey you have so you can get back to healing your teammates very quickly then I always bring 10 flashbugs and 3 flashpots because as you probably know Behemoth will cast a spell and after a certain period of time he will summon a tornado similar to the tornadoes that Kushaladawar summons and this can be a big pain in the ass, this can be the factor that may lead to your failure, however you can easily cancel this spell when behemoth starts casting it make sure you use a flash pot right at behemoth's head and that will cancel it and so you will not have to worry about having five tornadoes in the same area all clustered up and you will not be able to have or find a place to hide behind a fallen comet to not die from the ecliptic meteor of course I also bring some mega barrel bombs in case someone brings a sleep weapon and we put behemoth to sleep usually when we put behemoth to sleep in the first area we are able to break his horns both of them as soon as we place some bombs so this can be a very good strategy if you want to farm for some materials and finally I bring some sushi fish scales these ones do exactly the same thing as the Asteria Jerky, they cure bleeding and they also restore a small amount of health, which is always good as you guys know, Behemoth does inflict bleed damage once he pins you down, so when that happens you can just consume one of these, you will restore a party member's health and you will also restore the bleed. One item that is not on my item pouch but can be very useful is of course the cold drink because sometimes behemoth will go into the Teostra and Lonastra area and that place is very nasty to fight. I hate fly fighting in that place but if you bring some cold drinks of course you are not going to take damage from the heat. Now I don't include these in my item pouch because there are cold drinks available to pick up in the supply box whenever you begin the quest so if you don't forget to pick those up it should be no problem that you don't carry those with you in the item pouch. As a support player at the beginning of the quest you should use your mega demon drug, mega armor skin, mega nutrients and so on 
and if you are using a hunting horn you should also perform a few melodies to buff your team. If you're playing with someone you know and you're talking to them you can just tell them to wait, but if you're playing with randoms, well, why don't you find some people to play with? Go to the description and click the link to our Discord server, we have almost 1000 members over there and it's an amazing community and a good place to find people to play with. That's where I go whenever I need someone to play with. But if you don't want to do that and you're going to be playing with randoms, then I highly advise you to make some shots that you can use at the beginning of the quest so everyone knows that you will be running a support build and will be buffing your team. The one that I use states wait for my buffs and while you're at it add a few more that might help you in the fight such as move away from the comets and going back to camp to restock whenever you run out of items and use a farcaster to go back to camp. Make sure you add all of these to your radial menu for some quick and easy access and while you are at it add the high jump emotes to your radial menu as well because these emotes can save your life. As you can see here, you can avoid being killed by the ecliptic meteor by using the high jump emote at the right time. So if you find yourself pretty far away from the comets or if all of the comets that the behemoth has dropped have been destroyed, use this emote to save your life and keep on with the quest. Now going back to the set that I use, my weapon of choice is the hunting horn called the Empress Roar Ruin which is the Nurgigante version of the Lunastra hunting horn. It comes with 840 attack of the bat, white sharpness of the bat and it comes with 150 blast elements, has a level 2 decoration slot and for its melodies you get of course self improvement which is present in all hunting horns, health recovery small, affinity up and health recovery small and earplugs large. This is all self explanatory, health recovery allows you to heal a good amount of health for your teammates while you are doing damage with the hunting horn, affinity up will of course increase the amount of affinity that your weapons have and this of course affects your teammates and will also heal them when you do this and earplugs is just to make sure that you are not stopped while Behemoth uses his roar and we don't want to have situations where Behemoth roars and then right after the roar he summons the ecliptic meteor and you could not move to a safe place because Behemoth was roaring and thus the entire party wipes out, having here plugs large will avoid that situation becoming true. And of course on top of all of that we also get the skill hasten recovery which makes it so that whenever you hit the monster you will recover a small portion of your health which is a nice bonus on top of all of this. A very good alternative would be the Desolations Overture which is an Urgigante hunting horn which comes with all of the same melodies that the Empress Roar Ruin has and for its stats the Desolations Overture comes with an attack stat of 882, blue sharpness maxed out, a dragon element of 150, high alert seal and one level 1 decoration slot. Now this one comes with more attack than the previous hunting horn and it also has a dragon element which Behemoth is weak to, so it might be a good idea to run this if you want to make it a bit more offensive and the fact that it has blue sharpness doesn't really mean much because if you use self improvement twice you will get a buff that will make it so your weapon never bounces off a monster so you will not have problems with that. Another hunting horn that works very well against behemoth especially if you have someone in your team that is using a paralysis weapon is the queen vest point hunting horn which I might add looks very cool and unique. This hunting horn comes with 672 attack which is a bit on the low side, it comes with white sharpness of the bat, has 300 paralysis element which is very very high, it comes with 2 level 1 decoration slots and for the melodies, stamina usage reduced large, all wind pressure negated, defense up large, ice resistant boost large and finally sonic waves. Now out of all of these melodies you are not going to be using ice resistance or sonic waves, they have nothing to do with behemoth so you should not worry about those, but 
you do get defense up large which if you encore you can turn into defense up extra large which is an insane defense boost and can make sure that your team stays alive throughout the entire duration of the fight. Stamina usage reduced large makes sure that your teammates always have enough stamina to run behind the comet whenever the ecliptic meteor is about to fall down, so you only end up preventing that from happening even more so. And additionally, you also get all wind pressure negated and this is good because of the tornadoes that Behemoth summons. These can be a big pain in the ass during the behemoth fight and I know that many teams cannot keep up with the tornadoes, they don't get the flash pods ready on time so they are not able to cancel the spell that behemoth is casting and as such they get the areas they are fighting behemoth in filled with tornadoes and sometimes you have a comet that is surrounded by tornadoes and it's such a big mess and it's almost impossible to survive in that environment. And what all wind pressure negated does is while it does not let you go across the tornadoes like the rock steady mantle does for example, this allows you to get inside the outer layer of the tornadoes without getting knocked back or taking damage so the tornadoes will be much easier to deal with. But once again, the best way to deal with the tornadoes is by using the flash pots to cancel the spell as soon as Behemoth starts casting it, but if you cannot do this then this hunting horn is certain to help you out. And guys, I know that many of you have a prejudice against the hunting horns, you either think that it's boring to play as a support, or you think that the hunting horn is just way too complicated for you to use. And let me tell you this, I learned how to use the hunting horn just 3 days before the behemoth update dropped and I've been using it ever since and this has allowed me to carry so many groups through behemoth without much of a hassle. Now like I said, the hunting horn is not the determining factor, you have many other good options to play as a support player, you could use a sword and shield for example, which would also allow you to take out your flash pods very easily and very quickly, so that you can then blind behemoth and cancel the spells when he is about to cast them, which could be very useful, but like I said my preferred weapon for the support set is the hunting horn and I highly highly recommend it. A few more tips that I would like to talk about are at the beginning of the fight, don't go straight away for Behemoth, wait for him to come to you and then drop these crystals on top of him for some huge amount of damage, there are plenty of them in the first area of the fight and make sure you use them to your advantage. And if you can put Behemoth to sleep and have your entire team use some mega barrel bombs as well, then you may be able to break his horns on the first area, dealing massive amounts of damage and also giving you some extra rewards at the end of the quest, even if you fail. We have already gone over just how important flash pots are to cancel the tornado spell that Behemoth does, but did you know that you can also cancel the enmity targeting that Behemoth does once he takes enough damage to the head? That's right, as you can see here on this clip, I got targeted by Behemoth, it says that I have drawn enmity from Behemoth and he will now be after me. And me being a support player I am there to help out the team and I cannot help out the team if Behemoth is after me. So I can use a flash pod and I use a flash pod as you can see in this clip and then Behemoth gets staggered and he no longer targets me. You can also do this by knocking down Behemoth or putting him to sleep or paralyzing him but this is a much more reliable way to go about it since you have full control over your flash pods. Also in case you didn't notice you can control where the comets that Behemoth summons are going to land. At some point during the fight after Behemoth takes enough damage he will summon 4 comets in each phase of the fight. These comets will target a player on your team and a red lightning or something of the sort will show up on the floor and if your character starts moving the red lightning will move along and try to keep up with you. This indicates where the comet is going to land and as soon as you see that red flashing on the floor you should move to a location that you think the comet is going to be safe and will be a good location for you and your teammates to hide behind. You have plenty of time, you have maybe 3, 4, 5 seconds to go about it, so just run towards a place you think is suitable for a comet to be in. And much like the comets, these tornado spell that Behemoth casts can also track you, so you can use this to your advantage. If you see that Behemoth is casting a tornado and you don't have any flash pods on you, you are not able to flash him and cancel the animation, 
Then what you can do is run towards the edge of the map, where then once the tornado is summoned, a large part of it will be outside the area that can reach you, so it will be much easier to deal with that tornado. Another thing to keep in mind is that Behemoth will perform the Ecliptic Major once you have dealt about 25% of damage to his health, so if you see that you are dealing a lot of damage to Behemoth, you should be on the lookout for that, and additionally you can tell very easily when the Ecliptic Meteor is going to happen. As soon as Behemoth gets ready to perform the Ecliptic Meteor, the color surrounding the minimap will turn from red to white, and even if Behemoth sometimes has to perform a few actions, right after he is done with that, he will certainly perform the Ecliptic Meteor, so by then you already know that it's going to happen and you can start running to towards the nearest comet to get away from his attack. And finally, another point that I would like to hit upon, because I know that a lot of people don't take this into consideration, and that is food skills. Whenever you go to the canteen before a quest, you should not be focusing on if you are getting extra health or defense or whatever, you should try to focus on the food skills, because there are some of them are very very powerful and they can be lifesavers. A very good one to run with the supportive set that I've showed is Feline Medic, which will increase the amount of healing you can do, which therefore will make you and your teammates stay alive for much longer. Feline Moxie is another very good food skill, it works in the same way as the skill guts does, this will allow you to survive many hits that would one hit kill you, however, Moxie does not allow you to survive the Ecliptic Meteor, so you should take that into consideration. But, to prevent the team from wiping from the Ecliptic Meteor, what you can have is the food skill Feline Insurance. Now, unfortunately, this is a daily skill, which means that you cannot eat for Feline Insurance every time you go on the Behemoth Hunt, but this skill gives you an extra card to the quest, so normally the Behemoth quest will fail if three members die. However, with Feline Insurance, it will only fail if four members die. It's so simple, yet it's so powerful, and it will save many many groups, so be sure to talk to everyone in your group and ask them to look for feline insurance in the canteen, and if they have it, make sure that you use a voucher so that you can guarantee that you are going to get this skill, because trust me, this is going to allow you to complete many hunts that you thought you were not going to be able to. And with that, this is pretty much it for my tips on Behemoth, to be honest, I can see why so many people are having trouble with him, but I personally have never had much of an issue with Behemoth, and I really do think that it's because of the set that I'm running, so go ahead, give it a try, you don't really require many rare materials, the only thing that you may be missing is the Valhazak Gamma Coil, because you would need to have killed Arc Tempered Valhazak to get it, but besides that, all of the materials are very accessible, and this build is very very powerful, and most importantly, it has the Wiggler Head, so use it and let me know if it works out for you. And once again, if you are looking for people to play with, go to the link in the description below, join the Discord server, join the thousands of people that have already joined, and you'll be able to find a welcoming group that will take Behemoth down with you. So with that being said, let me know what you thought of this set and of the guide itself, and if you want me to make more videos like this in the future, we are getting Behemoth Extreme very soon, we are also getting Arc Tempered Teostra and Arc Tempered Kushala Daor. So if you guys want to see more guides like this in the future, let me know in the comments section down below, I will be interested in reading what you guys think about the set and if it has made a difference in your runs. And with that being said, please make sure to smash the heck out of the like button below for us because you already know that your support is greatly appreciated and be sure to subscribe and turn on channel notifications if you don't want to miss an ounce of Monster Hunter goodness. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, my name is Bindar Kiro and happy hunting!